fucked up. Call the cops on me. On a mission to be champs since they let me free. Prepare for combat, my adversaries crumble. Fake shit, I got a reputation for damage. Busters get ready to rumble. They lock me in a cell. Have me trapped in a living hell. Though not guilty, I'm still in jail. Brother, I serve my time like a soldier. Maintain composure. My shadow box in the fight to the death. Busting boulders. Every boxer with a pair of gloves. Best give up love. Here's a man from the makings of a thug. A lethal weapon, my sharp. And in my heart, there's a wish to shake the bread with the flurry of my black fist. Now, once a high school dropout. What's going on, everybody? Another episode of Cheap Seats Box Show. Angelo here. Oh, my God. It is us together. JP, what's up, man? <laughs> what happened? What happened? What happened is <laughs> uh, well, work is a motherfucker, and Christmas season has already started. Uh, first things first, follow us on Twitter at Cheap Seats Box. iTunes, rate and review. You'll be the next unofficial sponsor. You guys have not been doing that. Uh, I would really appreciate you guys could do that for us. Like I was telling you guys last week, iTunes is... Is cut it down even more. Top eight shows only are the only results that come up. So, in other words, if you're not the top eight, for people to find you, they'd actually have to go looking for you. Uh, so, it's very important that you do that. I really appreciate it if you guys could. Uh, you can follow us on all the platforms, YouTube, all that shit. Subscribe on there. And uh, what, what's the other listener around? Man, it's Zoom. Zoom listener. Um, it's been a while, JP. Well, it's probably been what? Month since we did one together? Man, <laughs> Just I about. I, I can't even. I uh, can't. <laughs> um, Last week there was a lot of uh, a lot of fights that was not so memorable, and then there was one memorable performance in front of one memorable crowd, man. Yeah, that was the shit. Um, well, let's start on uh, let's start on HBO. All right. Um, my interference! You get all the interference? You get all that? Oh it's shit! Picking up everything. Sorry, it's picking up everything. The microphone's picking up everything. We actually have a real microphone here for once. It's, it's fucking weird. <laughs> um, but on the uh, on the HBO side, uh, Danny Jacobs defeats uh, uh, Arius. Well, I can't think of his first name. Louis. Louis Army Arius. Um, there's not much to take from it, man. Arius was more of an um, a survival mode, and Jacobs, I guess, didn't totally going for the kill I guess it's you can't really get on him too much because it's like you can't make somebody fight you but I mean it was not the it was not the most impressive re-debut on HBO because of course he's been there before what what did you think man uh I think he beat his ass but I don't I don't I put this on Arias because of the way he was talking in the in the uh, press conference I'm gonna be in the middle ring. I'm I'm not running. Come get me. And then he was the one on the bicycle. And it's like, well, I guess he tasted Jacob's power. And he's like, wait, I didn't think this was gonna be it. And I like Aris because I thought he was a good fighter when he had the promotional issue, you know. But I think he was just outclassed. I think Jacobs just was a better man. And he and he could. I think he could have not got him out of there. But I think he just wanted to. Basically embarrassing. The knockdown wasn't real though. That wasn't a knockdown, folks. That was a Arias landed a good shot. He tried to get out of the way of Jacob's shot and basically tripped over his legs. But whatever, you know. Um, but I think he just he just got beat handily, you know. Yeah. It, un- unfortunately for him, it doesn't do a lot for people to go. Oh man, I can't wait for for Jacob's next fight. Um, like I said, he didn't ride that momentum off of the Golovkin fight the way I would l- have liked him to because everybody is pretty much a fan of Danny Jacobs. They love the story. They love the man. They even love the fighter. Uh, most times, this was just not one of them times, unfortunately for him. And when when Eddie Hearn is pushing you and he's making his promotional debut in the U.S. and reintroducing everybody on, on HBO to Danny Jacobs, it just wasn't the performance that they were wanting. Um, we'll see what's next. Uh, we know what he wants. He's not going to get. He's probably not going to get Golovkin. He's probably not going to get um, Canelo next. But there are other. He said he wants Jamal Charlo. That a great fight. Ooh. Who wouldn't want to see that fight? Um, and let's be honest. Sometimes we always say this: you got to be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. Because the 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 role that Charlo's on, yeah, like, it may be too much. Yeah, like, Man, all I know is I would love to see it. 
I would love to see it. There's, there's no getting around that. Right, That's a it. fucking fighter versus a fucking fighter. Yeah. And if if one now if, if Charlo or Jacob say I'm not running. You best believe that's exactly what the hell they mean, and they'll be throwing blows in the middle of the ring, you know. And one of them will fall because both of them can punch. <laughs> so, um, on the undercard, Jamel, Big Baby Miller, against Marius Walk, stops him in what four rounds? Uh, he came in the weight. I said like I wanted him Ooh. to slowly get down from he was two ninety nine, two now he got to two eighty three. It's kind of where I wanted it, two eighty three, two eighty four. He got in there. But look, he's still carrying too much weight. And it's really hard to take him serious because for a big guy, he doesn't throw hard punches. And people say, well, he doesn't get tired. Yeah, but he's not really exerting himself. It's like he's throwing. It's almost like he's managing how the type of punches and how heavy of a punches he's throwing to manage probably his cardiovascular because obviously he probably doesn't have very much. You know, like, well, he carries it well. Nobody carries unless you're like, Seven foot tall, nobody carries two eighty three. Well, it's not healthy, that's for sure. And it and the thing huh. is, is, is if he loses more weight, he becomes quicker. And if he becomes quicker, he becomes a more powerful puncher because it's getting to the target quicker. Because he's not a huge puncher to begin with. Until he gets down to that two sixty five area, that two sixty five, I'll, I'll give him that. That's probably still more than he needs. But another twenty pounds, it's going to be hard to take him serious. I mean, I can't see him beating any of the top heavyweights. I like his trash talk. Yeah, I wish it was. I wish his fighting was as good as his trash talk. Uh, but it, to me, it's, it's, it's more than the weight on the on on the offensive side. It's the defensive side of the weight. You're a big target. You can't really get out of the way. Yeah, planes, trains, automobiles. <laughs> you know, you you can't get get out of the way. And let's be honest. Even though the heavyweight division is coming alive, mm-hmm. we haven't seen really a heavyweight that punches to the body yet. And I think he'll be a prime example of punching to the body. And he looks soft to the body just because he's 283. Yeah. You know, so it is what it is. I mean, and it's, he has a lot of disadvantages with that weight. And I think one of the things people don't for, people seem to forget about is there were a lot of guys his size who actually got down to an optimal fighting weight. And the problem is we don't know what an optimal, a optimal fighting weight for Big Baby is. Because, you know, if he's going to lean on you all night, that's one thing. But... uh I don't see him making it against Joshua or, or, or Wilder. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I um, Parker, maybe. I Parker probably jab him to death. Though. That's what I said. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, maybe just, because I'm saying it's hard to take him serious till he gets to that point. Right. right. And the only reason I say Parker is because of the, the Molina the, fight. Yeah, he's the lesser of the, the three evils, I guess. Right. <laughs> so it's just like uh, interesting. Um. I'm going to jump over because I did honestly that the the opening bout I did not see. I am going to be straight up honest. On the HBO, I did not see that first one. Um, but the ESPN card, two fights I'm going to talk about. Arthur Perturbiev, uh gets the 12th round stoppage uh, over insert bum name here. And that's oh. all it was was it was a it was supposed to be a showcase to a a, a title. And he got the title. He got the, the vacant uh, I think it was the IBF uh, light heavyweight title, but he threw eleven hundred punches, and it didn't feel he didn't feel like you were watching. <laughs> it didn't feel like that kind of fight, though. You know what I mean? You didn't <laughs> when they put the numbers up the end, and and, I, and I'm kind of watching it from a distance because I, I'm at a I'm at a, a, a brewery, right? And they have it on at the brewery, and that's that's a good sign yeah. that they had it on. But it was just monotonous. It was the same thing for twelve rounds. It was the same fucking fight. He won every round, but again. You there are there are points to be given for how you win a fight, and the 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 way that you win it and the and the statement that you make like in the main event. This isn't that kind of statement to where people go, man. I can't wait to see Baturbia. People like and they remember ESPN as much as this wasn't even the main event. His name was the headline on the card, on the listing. I right. don't understand why the other guy sold thirteen thousand plus seats, 
but whatever. If your name's on the top of that bill, then you need to back that shit up. And I don't, I, I, as much as he shut him out and then stopped him in the 12th, I didn't see anything from that that made me go, man, but Turbiev's getting better. I mean, he has taken steps back. And I think it's kind of obvious that he has taken steps back. Um, he hasn't been as active. Um, and it's incumbent on him after winning this title to, to, to face the ki- kind of opposition that gets his name back in the mix and shows you that this guy is for real, that he is, that the hype that he came in with is justified. And I, I, I didn't see that in this fight. His, like, it's weird because I think he did his job. And I think he gave, he gave other, he gave other fighters more of an issue than he gave the fans entertainment, because like you said, how many punches? I think it was eleven hundred and eleven. So, I think it was like something like that. It was crazy. So unless not, I saw something, if I wasn't seeing it right from a distance, which is possible, but I thought I saw eleven hundred punches thrown. But but with that output, you guys his size are like, uh, why? You know, like. Can you can you see that? You know. Now I got to look that shit up. By the way. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> the the other thing was you know okay the constant pressure until the guy folded. I think that that's a problem for other for fighters to deal with because now fighters got to deal with. He can get stronger or he can wear me down so much that he looks stronger by the end of the fight. So that's a fighter issue, you know. Uh, I think him and him and uh, Kovalev got a little beef, but I don't think Kovalev gonna stay at their weight. So he gonna drink himself into the next one, man. And I saw that too. But I think what he did was he made sure that people he gave people who wanted to duck him an excuse that it wasn't exciting. But the real excuse is they they're not ready for that output. You know that. Did he do his job? Yeah. Did he stop him? I think they gave him a stop. To be perfectly honest. Yeah. You know, but he stopped him, and that's that. That adds to his uh, mystique. But you know, that wasn't the best fight of that card by far. No. Um. I'll uh, I'll let you start that one off because you know I got the. I'll go in a little bit more detail on it. Jose Ramirez pummels. Mike, yes, indeed, read. And yes, indeed, that was a statement by the other guy, Jose Ramirez, um, in two rounds, man. what you Everything, like, you know, because for a lot of people, this is the first time they've seen the Save March Center. Like, you know, that that pack, that crazy. It's been on Unimas a couple times like that. But to see it, to, to, to kind of hear the crowd, feel the crowd, and then the statement, what you saw Jose Ramirez make, what would you think, man? I think he answered the call of putting his city on the map the minute they gave him the opportunity. I think my ribs hurt from <laughs> when he decided, oh, yep, I got him. Yeah. And I also think his opponent was quality to the point where you got to say, yeah, this dude is damn serious. And now who who el- who's up next has got a problem. Um, and I'm going to shut up at that <laughs> and let it be, st- and, and, and let the gospel be spoken. All right. This was in the house that Jerry Tarkanian built. Let's be honest. This is, this is how this whole arena, I can give you the backstory. Fresno State used to play in Selland Arena. They brought Jerry Tarkanian in. He coached them for, what, I don't know, eight, nine years. Uh, they built the Save Mart Center. It has never been like that. Paul George is probably the closest thing that got to filling up that that, that arena. Uh, but Jose Ramirez has been selling this shit out for for three years. You know, people are trying to, and it's funny because I've been the one saying it for years and years that this is hey, this is the guy, this is the guy. He's selling shit. He's selling for the last three years. He's been selling. He's been selling. He's selling ten thousand, eleven thousand, twelve. Now the last three fights is over thirteen thousand. He did thirteen eight thirty eight. For that arena, that is a complete sellout. Um, remember, I think it was the Crawford fight. I think he got the 13-2. That had been the most he had sold. Well, this is the third fight in a row. That's Yes, it's barely more, but it's three fights in a row that he's actually s- sustained this. Um, he puts he put the, the Central Valley, where, of course, I'm from, uh, on the map. And it's funny because 
I give props out to uh, oh shit here comes somebody fucking being cool uh, Vince Cummings on Taylor Tape he's the only one actually gave me any any like hey look this, he's the one who he's the one who's been putting it out there that's the number one ticket seller this is the known number one American born boxing ticket seller that's just there's no way around it you can say whatever you want to say he has been I said this after the Crawford fight when he unified um, it's because he put himself in that position getting into the the fight for the water for the farmers because the Central Valley what people don't understand about California is there's a whole forgotten area where we're from in the Central Valley that is not like the Bay Area is not like LA it's a farming agricultural based area and the farmers have been hit hard with the with the drought that went on forever and now that the water's back it's like come on now you got to release these waters to these farmers is how they make their money he's gotten behind that and that's how he's gotten the whole Central Valley behind him and if the one thing Anybody knows about the valley is once you start, once you rep the valley, they will support you. Fresno State always gets great support because that V on the back of the helmet is for the valley. It's for the whole valley. And what he did was he made a statement and said, not only am I selling this many tickets, but it is deserved. And look how I went in. He knocks, I mean, actually early on in the second round, he actually got caught with a, with a nice stiff shot. And all it did was seem to wake him up. And then he catches Reed with a hook. Kind of, and then Reed stumbles back, and then you just see, like, the red in his eyes. Like, that's it. I'm going in for the kill. And then he knocks him down once. I think he knocked him down a second time. Jack Reese called it a push, whatever. And then after that, he digs to the body. I think like five or six straight left hooks to the body. And the fight's over that quick. And the people say it was a quick stoppage, but he threw about 30 or 40 punches in a row, where Reed never threw one back. Didn't tie up nothing. He did nothing. And just sat there and took it. There's no way to say that this was, to me, that it was an early stoppage. Um, I've been talking about it forever. It's finally come to fruition. People are now, uh, now that he's selling this many tickets, you know, he's he's making a statement. No, he's been selling this many. It's just now people are starting to come around and going, oh, shit. Look at this guy. You know, he's doing what? He's doing what Crawford is doing in Omaha. He's doing more tickets than Wilder did in Alabama, more than Broner did in Cincinnati. He's outselling everybody. And and I think the shine will come on him now. He's got a merry mom, possibly in April. I may be making a trip out back home to go see that. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't been to a fight in forever. Uh, and I've only been to one in Fresno, and that's when Floyd Mayweather came to Fresno. 7,000 people there for Floyd Mayweather right after his second fight with Jose, Jose Luis Castillo. He was already a star. 7,000. Jose Ramirez is doing 13-8. That kind of tells you what we're dealing with here. Um, and the numbers. This is like the second highest rated cable fight all year. One and a half mm-hmm. million people. Who knows what it was with the, you know, they do the plus three and the plus right. seven with the DVR plus your streaming. It's probably well over two million, probably closer to three. Once you do all that streaming and all that other all the other shit that goes into it, this was a huge, huge huge audience, and that's what we're talking about. When we're saying you have the platform to make a statement, make a statement. And people are like, hey, he's not this this style isn't fit for the long haul, but it doesn't matter. You're gonna get you're gonna make your mark, you're gonna make your money, you're gonna get in, you're gonna get out, and you're gonna be a legend in your area, no matter what. He gets that title because it's supposed to be for the vacant WBC title. That is a I mean, Mayor of the city. Yeah, and, and and if they do the fight at Bulldog Stadium in the football stadium, if he can really f- sell that out where he's getting thirty, thirty-five, possibly forty thousand, you can't. There's no way to to deny the facts that this is your number one ticket seller in the United States, American born. You know, Canelo's always going to be ahead of him. Triple G is currently ahead of him. But like I said, American born. We're looking for those next American stars. People should be getting behind a guy like this. He's fi- he. He's uh, fan friendly in his fighting style. He's selling out the place. He's got the people behind him. He's a good kid, man. When you get behind, you know, when you get behind the farmers and, and the whole area, and you got them on your back, I mean, and he's Olympian. What more do you want? It's all right there. It's just will America choose to follow this guy? We'll see after this. Give me the Amir Mama fight. I like him in that fight. To me, it was a it was a close fight going into this fight, and then seeing what he did to Reed and seeing how he went in for the kill, and remembering what Granados did to Imam. 
I don't know. It could be a long night for a married mom. <laughs> this is going to be a very interesting occurrence. Because we talked about this, and I was like, now you got him making this statement, and you got a married mom I'm like, I can't. Look, look, the last time I was on the cusp, you know, I, I, I got stumped at, at the finish line. So you're going to have two fighters knowing, yo, this is make or break, period, you know. He he's fighting. He'll be fighting for the valley. Amir be fighting. Like, look, if I if I blow this one, I may never, ever. So you're gonna get two hungry lines at the right time. Two young hungry lines on the come up at the right time. So you're not gonna get anything but either complete domination or a classic fight that you just weren't expecting to see. And I just love the idea of it. To be perfectly honest. And something that, that you were talking about with, with, with his ticket seller, and we talked about this in the past, they were going to have to take advantage of these young fighters in these different markets who packed the house. I can guarantee you when his, when his time is over, he's going to be a gatekeeper to Fresno. Like, you know, if you want to sell it out, well, you got to bring me on. I'll promote it. I'll help you. Blah, blah, blah. Because everybody is not selling, for, like you said, everybody's not selling tickets like him for one. But when the market goes up and down, you're going to need those fighters to say, well, come to my hometown. It's been a while since they've seen a good fight. I could get you in the door. So with, with his career flourishing, keep doing your thing. When it's over, make sure they pay you when you have to do it. So that's my thoughts. What do you think about it? He, he's at, I mean, his gates are a million dollars now. And if they go to the 30000 35000 he's at $3 million. And if it's a title fight, it, the ticket's going to be a little bit more expensive. You're looking at our $4 million gates. People, not a lot of people are doing that. Especially in a place like the Valley, where... Nobody goes. <laughs> it ain't a destination, that's for sure. Um, but because you can draw a gate like that, well, guess what? Now you can pay to get people to come, and that's a big th- that's a big thing. Uh, I'll give credit to him because he did a lot of this himself, but also Aaron for keeping him in his in his hometown, in his home area. He's moved. He's fought here and there. He's fought in Reno and other places. Uh, he's fought on I think a Pacquiao undercard. I think. I think so. I think so. He's got, and he's gotten better with Freddie, with Freddie in his corner. He's only gotten better. He's gotten more. He's gotten away more from the where he's doing the side to side movement, and just look, he's Olympian. He's got skills. He's not just a brawler. He's he's fought. I think what's uh I think he fought Lomachenko. Maybe maybe he didn't do so great with him. But he's seen these levels of fighters throughout his amateur career. So, you know, I I, I just want people to get behind him, man. Um, you know, he's not really the biggest sports star in the Valley. That would still go to Derek Carr. <laughs> you ever heard of him? He's from the Valley. It's on the outskirts of Bakersfield. It's still the same thing. He played at Fresno State. I guess we could even claim Aaron Judge. He went to Fresno State. Um, but <laughs> it, it's not. It's just a forgotten area. That's all it is. And that's why when somebody from that area makes a statement like that, you're like. And they ain't got nobody else. Well, there are people, and it's slow. And I'd have to. Go, man, I went through the the resume of Fresno State with you, and you're like, oh, Paul, Paul George went there, and all these yeah, other like, NFL the players, f- and the, you know, I was like, there's a lot. I mean, it, I don't think they claim Ryan Matthews no more. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Matthews. They probably don't. They barely claim Trent Dilfer, man. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> but um, no, but you know what? Terrence Crawford actually vacating all his belts at 140. Has actually opened up the door for a, a a a lot of young good fighters and even some even a couple of retreads because supposedly you know now they're saying this is supposed to be for the vacant belt next fight. Then there's also rumors that it's not. It's a final eliminator to fight the winner of Polestyle and Regis Progre. Okay, well there's another great fights to happen at 140. And what about the guy? across the pond who made a statement in Josh Taylor shout out to the new age Boston podcast my man Martin who was always hey man you got and we had heard Taylor but he's like you got to pay more attention to Taylor Taylor's Josh Taylor is about to make statements and he made a statement 
It was just in his hometown where he's selling ungodly amounts uh, of tickets uh, against a guy in Miguel Vasquez who nobody really dominates to the level of what Josh Taylor did. And Josh Taylor taking in a, 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 a great veteran fighter for especially where Josh Taylor is, what is it? I think he's 11 fights into his mm. pro career. That is a great fighter to be in against. You're going to get rounds. You're going to get, you're going to get different tricks. You're going to get just a different style of fighting. A Mexican fighter who fights so anti Mexican style in quotes <laughs> that to put to, to, to stop him, to fight through the early cut and to dominate Vasquez and to just basically beat him in, to submission, that's a huge statement. That is another. Could you imagine those two places crossing paths? Scotland and <laughs> Scotland and Fresno. I mean, like, <laughs> I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw a scenario out there. We're talking about a division that there are few that that most of the young lines are unknown to most people, and they have a few names. But when you look at it, just from from just a fan perspective, the names in that division are going to have a hard time beating the prospects and the contenders. So you could see somebody like worst case scenario, worst worst name, worst fighter with the big name would be probably Adrian Brown mm-hmm. to be in that division right now. Because you'd be like, oh, he's Adrian Brown, he got this reputation. But with these guys. This ain't no walk in the park. Mm-hmm. Like, can you can he be post style? Prograve? I think he can. I'm I'm a, I'm on big on on Prograve, man. I mean, he's been man, he's been running through people, man. No, that's what I'm saying. Can Broner beat them? Oh, can Broner? But no, you know what? It's funny because I talked about that last week. It was like I don't even know if Broner at this point is even a top ten junior welterweight. That's that's because I'm like. I'm thinking about those guys. I don't know, man. I think Ramirez might get him. Especially because, like, Ramirez is a way better version of, like, an Adrian Granados. And Granados and him went toe to toe. Went fucking head to head. It was close, tight. You got him. You got Emir Mom, Regis Progre, uh, Antonio Orozco, Victor Postal, um, Josh Taylor, um, even Felix Diaz, hmm. who he went. Look, look what he did. Um, Sergey Lipinets, Rancis Bartholomew. I'm 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 struggling to find a name where I would just go, yeah, Adrian Broner beats those guys. That's <laughs> that, but and that's <laughs> you know that that's a, a big pressure on him to win a title again. But but all props in this particular situation to me, first and foremost, goes to Terrence Crawford because once he vacated mm-hmm. and he made this mad scramble for belts, now you're about to see. Guys who ain't playing games. Like, Crawford was head and shoulders above everybody. But now this mix that we got now, these guys ain't playing. And they're all in that, they're all pretty close to that same, like, not level, but place in their career. Where, like, well, I don't know if Progray's ready at this point. I don't know if Lippinets is ready at this point. The people definitely weren't thinking that Ramirez was ready at this point. But now those guys are all close into where they were as far as being ready for that le- for that step up. Now they're doing it all together, Josh Taylor and, and all these guys. And we knew that Postal was a, obviously a level below, so he's going to f- be right in there, even though where he was at in his career is a little bit further progressed, but he's at that level, though. You know, It reminds me, you got a division of people who are on the cusp of being rung Versailles. Mm-hmm. That's basically what you got. A, you got a bunch of guys who like, <laughs> you put me in there for this belt on a right night, it's coming home. I don't care who in there. I don't care their name. And, and it is so evenly matched for most of these guys. You really can't, like even post out, it's like great fighter, but it's like, dude, you might be in the wrong place at the wrong time too, and that says a lot about the competition that these young that these young lions bring. In. They're not, you know. You could, if you want to win, you better leave your name and reputation at the door on that last step before you get into the ring, because they don't give two shits about it. 
And if you just saw the fight with Ramirez, if you ain't got it, YouTube it. It's hard to find. Uh, <laughs> on YouTube, I was I found highlights, man. I hadn't found the fight. Well, yeah, it is coming. <laughs> but you know, it, it's that type of scenario where you you you're gonna fall in love with names you don't know yet, but you will know. It's kind of like having like we're kind of like your gatekeeper to the favorite artist that you haven't heard of yet. You know, somebody said, yeah, wait until next year. You're going to know this name. Look at that whole division. All those names, you're going to know those names. Yeah. Um, it's just funny because guys like Taylor, who's only 11 fights in, and the guy from Fresno are going to be the guys who can make the demands. No, no, you got to come to me. Now, what happens? Because Taylor has a silver belt, right? And, and Ramirez, if he can get the WBC belt, that's where this power struggle is going to be a little bit. But, of course, a guy like Taylor, like, mm, I can go to America and make a statement. Because, look, even if he comes to America, they ain't, he ain't coming to America to go to Vegas or any place like that. He's coming to, He's coming only to go to Fresno. <laughs> I, I got a healthy medium. Uh, if they can make it happen, hop on a pay-per-view in Wembley if you want to go to the U.K., Hop on a pay per view in Vegas if you're gonna do it in the U.S. There you go. <laughs> that's the only. That's the only two reasons to not fight at home. Yeah. Um. And forgive us, we're probably gonna run through this kind of quick, man. But this this week, it's just it's not as heavy. Um, the return of um, let's see, where is it? At? Anthony Durrell, Dennis Douglas. I mean, what? <sighs> yeah, yeah, it is what it is. Tune up. <laughs> um. The ESPN card, come on, man. Jose Martinez, Jesus Martinez, and just confuse everybody. Um, huh. <laughs> um, the the bounce TV card is probably the that one. There's that one, and there's a fight in on the uh, on the uh, Carl Frampton on the card. That's probably the two best fights. Uh, Julian Williams making a second fight in this comeback since the loss to Jamal Charlo. Against uh, the old veteran now, Ishay Smith, it's a good matchup because it needs to be a step up from where Williams was on his last fight. Um, but this is look if Williams is who we think he is and who we thought he was before the fight against Charlo, he should go through a guy like Ishay. Ishay is an older guy now um, who loses generally to that next level fighter. So if his confidence is all the way back. Then we should see J Rock just push himself right back into contention at 154. Who knows? Maybe against Jermel. <laughs> you know, don't do a, it if he wants those kind of <laughs> those kind of problems. And then, uh, like I was saying, the Carl Frampton on his comeback after the uh, Santa Cruz fight, um, Horatio Garcia. Not much to talk about there. It's it's a it's just a, a it's 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 sitting up on a T form. And there's not much to say about that. Um, it's at 126. He he'll make the weight easy. I know he hasn't fought in forever, but it, it's just an it's just a showcase. That's all it is. Here's the irony. We have a history of saying these fights are gonna be blah, and what normally happens? A couple of those fights, you're like, what? How the what the wait? How did that just happen? Like that's not supposed to happen. So ironically. Even though these fights don't look the best, all of them on paper, I could we uh, a third of them might be complete battles. It could, um, but it, that's all you want to see. You just want to see the return of Frampton. There's not really much to pull from that fight. I think the the um, the best fight on that one, of course, is the undercard fight: Jamie Conlon going up against uh, Herwin Anaconda. So you saw on the I think it was the Pacquiao undercard. Um, you know, people have want they've been wanting to see Conlon move to take that step. Mm-hmm. He's getting a little bit older. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of those eighty-five year old, uh, those eighty-five year old uh, uh, um, contenders. Um, He's a light Cuban. Yeah, um, like I, I like Anna Cajas. We saw the I think it was a big knockout too. If I I'm, I I can't remember the the uh-huh. fighter, but I know it was a huge knockout. Um, and I don't know if Conlon's got enough in his arsenal to keep Anacahas off him. Any of those Filipino fighters, man, they're going to fucking come at you. They're like Japanese fighters. They're like fucking 
certain yeah. parts of uh, of Africa, you know, depending. Dude, what, you can't you know what I mean? off, yeah, bro. exactly. He's that's gonna get embarrassed. Yeah, but I think that's the closest. I think that's the closest fight. I think that's. I think that's the fight. Um, to watch it's probably the most competitive fight of the entire weekend um especially over there on the on that side of the pond it's the biggest one and over here it's probably like i said it's probably the ishe uh j-rock fight uh, but i i'll, I'll take anna Kahas to to get a decision victory and he's gonna have to earn it over there in belfast he's gonna have to fucking earn it because if it's anywhere close uh, look for connor and get the decision damn right <laughs> um what else, JP? I know there's been something. Oh, you know who's been talking shit again? Can, can can Oscar shut the fuck up, man? Can we can we just stop with the bullshit? No. I mean, look, you're calling out Conor McGregor, but why? Really, why? I mean, I guess to keep your name out there. And like here, and then the funny thing is, he would fight him because he would beat him, and he'd make a lot of money off of it. And if he actually was to do some dumb shit like that, that would just show you financially where his where his company's at if he has to do something like that to generate revenue because only Canelo is is getting any kind of revenue for him here's my thing as as a promoter I get you're trying to stay relevant I get you're trying to push the envelope just keep your name in the mix um just as a fan watching Your reputation as a fighter and your actions as a man over time are completely different. So people don't, don't, the respect in the past look, is, is looks like a facade to the point where people don't, like, man, here he go again. You know, like, we knew Don King's history, but you're becoming worse than Don King. And your history is supposed to be squeaky clean. So now it's like, you're too much of a hypocrite. So, I mean, and I get it. Because the one thing that people haven't said in this, in this whole time, and it's trying to be respectful, even with the thing with uh, the Heyman situation, it really wasn't Al Heyman's fault that your fighters left for you. And it says a whole lot that none of your fighters came back yet. So... You have to really, really build a new stable, but I think more so build trust. You know, I think, you know, and with the game widening out, like, if I was him, honestly, it's still Golden Boy Promotions. But make Bernard Hopkins the face of it right now. You know, like, don't, 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 Cause it was doing, it was really doing pretty good when Oscar was missing and it was Schaefer and Hopkins. You know, it, as far as perception of the company, like he's killing his mystique with his shit. So it, it is what it is. Cause you can't be. A, I don't think he can. You know what? It was hard for Hulk Hogan to be a heel because everybody knew him as Hulkamania, and I think even if. Oscar is really a heel in real life. It's hard for him to be looked at as a heel because of the the golden boy upbringing. So it's it's nothing good coming from that. But I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> um, I don't know. There's not, there's not there's not that much going on at this point. Uh, you got any other things that you want to hit on? Kovalev. What drinking? I'll say this: um, I didn't see I didn't see the video. I, I know what was in it. John David Jackson talking about him drinking through training oh, no. camp. It's not that one. Which now. one? Okay, what, what do we got? He now? has one. Like he lets lets the world know he loves beer. Okay, I love beer. So you know what? No, no, no harm, no foul. Um, here's a problem. I don't fight for a living. Yes, <laughs> and you know that. Like, I think Kovalev is in a precarious situation right now. Because I don't think he's mentally over the war thing. And I don't think he's over the the John David Jackson thing. And I and what they both said about him so far is become is truth. And he d- 
doesn't know how to live with that yet. But I think the more important problem is we spoke about this already with the last war fight. His mind was in the first war fight. Mm -hmm. Now with this fight coming up, his mind seems to be talking about the the wrong thing except for the fighter. That's a problem. You know, most fighters are in the moment type guys. You're not in the past type guys. Once a fighter starts living in the past, he starts becoming a victim. So it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's not much to say. I mean, like John David Jackson ratting him out now. Well, that was already out. That he was a, a drunk for the most part during training camp. Um, my thing is, if it's been, a, if this has been a past practice, why were you still in there for the second fight against Ward? Were you in there for the paycheck? I mean, if he'd have beat Ward, would you still be with him? Well. I didn't. I didn't listen to the whole interview. Yeah, I haven't either. But no. I know he's talking about like. No, Kovalev has an interview. He's like he oh. kept him, like to keep his reputation. Yeah, stuff. but what I'm saying, what I'm saying yeah. about John David Jackson, should have left. Yeah, at that point you leave. Oh, yeah. You, you got to have some kind of professional integrity. Like, nah, I ain't for that bullshit. Because, because what it does is it, it 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 almost tells another fighter like, look, if you get big enough, you can just tell John David Jackson, shut the fuck up. I'm gonna do what I want to do. And as a head trainer, you you have to you you're like you're like a football coach. Yeah, you may not be the highest paid guy on that team because there's going to be ten other guys on that team, but you got to say no, no, motherfucker. You going to respect me, or you're going to be sitting your ass on the bench? And it, and since you can't do stuff like that as a, as a boxing trainer, you're going to do what I say, or you got to get the fuck out. I'm just I can't have this bullshit. We you know like yeah. like would Kovalev do that? Um, with with Freddie Roach, would he done that with Emmanuel Stewart, a guy like that? Fuck no. But <laughs> here, here's the irony: the only way you are gonna make it out of this one, you can take the Ann Wolf road. Well, you see, when the motherfucker don't listen, he gets his ass whipped. Would he do that with Ann, Ann Wolf? No. Shit, no. And, and uh, like like say Freddie, right? You know, he did the one fight with with Chavez Jr. and it was like, oh, I ain't doing that shit again. <laughs> like, we want Freddie back. No. no. And that's what I'm saying. Like, you have look. It, it's a, it's one thing once you've gotten paid, like, like you're gonna be my right. trainer. All right, I can get through to him, and then you realize you can't get through to him. Then remove yourself from the situation. I mean, he's he's a good enough trainer and an established enough trainer that he doesn't just need he doesn't need Kovalev to to keep on getting fighters to come to him. Especially after the first fight, it would have been perfect to separate from him because it, a lot most people thought you won the fight, and then you separate from him. Now you got people flooding to try to fill that mm-hmm. void. I think he lost an opportunity. That's just my yeah. my opinion, and it's not his fault that that Kovalev's a fuck up. I, I mean, <laughs> but it, it's one of those situations where where no matter how you slice it, it's a lose lose for both people. Because it wasn't the fight that was the issue; it was all of the 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 quote unquote hearsay. It wound up being true and the hearsay that wound up being false where people like, as ah, possible though. So I think, you know, there's no win in, in that situation for either guy. You know, I think, I mean, because John David Jackson has a long history, it's like, eh, could this be a bump in the road? Time will tell. Same thing with Kovalev. Could this be a bump in the road? Time will tell. You know, but I think a lo- going forward, People might have questions about John's loyalty, and people might have questions about Kovalev's ability to, is, is he a quitter or not? So, like I said, this is something that time will tell about. Um, I don't know about you, but that's about it, man. It's going to be a shorter episode. You saw all the time when you fucking download the show. You saw how much it was. It's a little bit shorter. We ain't got as much time to spend on it. But we got together. That's the main thing, man. Look at us. We fucking, we did it, man. We did it. We're back. And we'll do it again. Wait, hold on. I can't fucking guarantee you that because I'm on vacation for the next two weeks. I can't even guarantee that we're going to be back next week together. But I am on vacation for the next two weeks for Thanksgiving, man. I can't, you know, it is what it is. And then maybe we'll get together for one. Maybe we won't. We're December gonna, December will get yeah. us three, four shows in a row. And then we're going to take a month off. But I told you we'll fill that in. I've told you guys how we're going to do that. Uh, um, hey, just give me goddamn credit, man, when I call this shit out, people. Say it again. <laughs> this is where the fighters fight the fans commentate. <laughs> and we do it just like you from the cheap seats. We ain't buying no tickets, goddammit. Peace. It's a
kill, so it's real like I'm catching cases. Ha <laughs> ha, let the world know I plan to die. If I don't leave.